and welcome to the video that we alluded to in the How to Play Token Rambu video. I'm Abby. I'm Alan. I'm Cam. And I'm Emily. And we're here to talk to you about the history of the characters featured in Token Rambu. In this first episode, we shall be talking about the five starter swords. So, we're starting off this series by talking about Kashu Kiyomitsu, an Uchigatana who you can choose from the start of the game. Kashu often describes himself as being a child of the riverbanks, or the child beneath the river, as is mentioned multiple times during his introductory speech. Ah, during the Edo period, Kashu's swordsmith lived in the slums of the Heijin, which happened to be on the riverbanks. This was because during the Edo period, people who were deemed to have unclean professions such as tanners or butchers or smiths were pushed to the bottom of the social order. People with such professions were not allowed to work on the rice fields and thus made their homes next to areas of water that were unsuitable for agriculture. So when Kashu describes himself as being a child of the riverbank, this is what he means. It's also worth noting that because of the circumstances in which Kashu was smith, the character in game takes great care in how he presents himself. He comes across as a refined beauty, dressing himself nicely and painting his nails so that he would not be reminded of his background and the oppression in which he came from. This is shown multiple times in his dialogue such as during the load screen and when equipping troops. Kashu's most famous master was Okita Soji of the Shinsengumi. Both Kashu and Yamato no Kami Yasusada were owned by this particular swordsman, which explains why these characters are often linked together in fan art and have unique dialogue within internal affairs. However, Yamato no Kami and Kashu have different feelings towards their master. Yasusada has an undying loyalty towards Okita, whereas Kashu is much less so and would happily replace Okita if he can find another master who will love him. This is because Yasusada does not have the same background as Kashu and therefore doesn't feel that it's necessary to fight for any kind of attention or care. The reason that Kashu probably has different feelings towards Okita is most likely because of the battle that took place in 1864, known as the Ikidaya Incident. During this battle it's said that Kashu's tip was broken and he was deemed irreparable. Thus he was abandoned by Okita. This particular part of Kashu's history has probably helped to shape his character in-game. If you combine how much his background affected him and how the sword was abandoned, it makes for some rather heartbreaking dialogue from the character. For example, when injured in the Citadel, he says, Or during repair, he'll ask, Probably most heartbreakingly, upon breaking, he'll say, there is very little known about the Uchi Katana Hachisuka Kotetsu, as he is a sword who was supposedly passed down through many hands within the Hachisuka clan, hence his name. No specific owners are known, though he was held by at least one of the Tokushima Domain Lords whilst being passed down through the generations. He was smithed by the swordmaker Nagasone Kotetsu, whose works were highly revered and prone to being counterfeited. This is a huge part of what defines Hachisuka's character in the game itself. He specifically mentions counterfeit and fake swords in his dialogue pieces no less than 11 times constantly reminding the player that whilst there are many fake Kotetsu swords out there, he is not one of them, perhaps as a sign of arrogance or insecurity. Another part of Hachisuka in game that's quite interesting is the golden armour of his design. This isn't there for simple grandeur or aesthetics, but rather as a connection to the golden mountings of the sword itself. The current location of Hachisuka is unknown, but he is said to be held in a private collection. This is much of the reason as to why he's hardly seen and little is known of him. There is generally a lot more history available on swords being held in museums. Mutsu no Kami Yoshiyuki was crafted in the early Edo period by Morishita Heisuke. The sword was handed down in the family of Sakamoto Ryoma. Sakamoto was a prominent figure during the Bakumatsu period, and during his youth he was a lover of swordsmanship until the Black Ships arrived. The Black Ships were western ships that arrived in Japan in the 16th and 19th centuries, and this event was one that changed the life of Sakamoto, who lived from 1835 to 1867. The story of Sakamoto and Mutsu no Kami is a lengthy one full of politics during the Edo period of Japan. When the black ships arrived, the foreigners threatened to end the way that Japan had thus far lived with its isolationist policies, which helped to further xenophobic beliefs within the country. 
Sakamoto, the owner of Mutsunokami, came from a modest background as the second son of a merchant samurai, and he was stuck in a traditional role until this justification came to him, and he was able to leave his clan in Tosa. He did this, realizing he could do something for Japan during its time period, even though his family would be severely punished for his leaving. There is one popular idea surrounding his leaving his family that is relevant to the story of him and Mutsunokami. It's said that before his leaving, his sister helped him to escape, giving him the sword as a gift so he would not leave unarmed, and she did this knowing she would have to commit suicide for helping her brother escape. Sakamoto was part of the anti-Bakufu activist group, which led him to being chased and hunted by the Shinsengumi, which is referenced in Yoshiyuki's speech when at the Citadel, in which he will say, Sakamoto, although enjoying swordsmanship during his youth, eventually began to prefer using a gun over using his sword, which is clearly shown in Yoshiyuki's design, as he's always toting a gun in his battle art. Yoshiyuki refers to swords having become old-fashioned during his introductory speech, and when idle in the citadel saying, Sakamoto was assassinated in 1867, and never managed to see his ideals of a modernized Japan come to fruition, which happened just two years after his death. This is reflected in Yoshiyuki's death speech, in which he says, Whilst trying to save himself, it's said that Sakamoto reached for Mutsunokami instead of his gun by reflex to defend himself, but the assassin cut through the sheath before he could draw out the sword. Currently, Mutsunokami is being held at the Tokyo National Museum, but is unavailable for public viewing. The most interesting thing about the origins of the Uchigatana Yamanbagari Kunihiro is that he's actually a replica of another sword. The original Yamanbagari was smithed in the 1300s by Nagayoshi Chogi, and was said to be a sword with spiritual powers. This is down to the sword having supposedly slain a mountain witch during its lifespan. This in turn is the origin of its name, Yamanba meaning mountain witch, and Giri meaning to cut. Much later on, the daimyo Hojo Ujimasa gave the original Yamanbagari to the lord of Ashikaga Castle, Nagao Akinaga, who chose to commission a replica in the late 1500s. This replica was smithed by Horikawa Kunihiro, Thus, the name Yamanbagari Kunihiro is sourced from the original name and the smith of the replica. The replica was considered to be an incredibly high quality piece, and was even said to be Kunihiro's finest work. It has even been argued that, due to the quality of this work, the sword shouldn't be known as a replica at all, but as something entirely original. Yamakuni passed through numerous hands in the centuries that followed his creation, and was even rumoured to have been burnt and lost in the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. There is very little reported in regards to the sword being used in any important conflicts, and is currently held in a private location in Tokyo. Within the game, a lot of Yamakuni's dialogue regards his position as a replica to the original Yamanbagari. He comments a lot on not being a fake, but often speaks with a great lack of confidence regarding being a duplicate. Yamanbagiri Kunihiro da. Nanda sono me wa? Utsushi da toyu no ga kininaru to? He also shows issues with being referred to as beautiful, which ties back to him being regarded as Kunihiro's masterpiece. A great deal of self-loathing is present throughout his dialogue, even going as far as to say, when he's being repaired or after moderate or severe damage. One of the most interesting lines of his come from when he's idle in the Citadel, with his speech of, this, of course, refers to the rumoured powers of the original Yamanbagari, and how Yamakuni doesn't want people to expect such great things from a mere copy. Kasen Kanasada was smithed by Izumi no Kami Kanasada during the Sengoku period. The smith was the second generation of Izumi no Kami Kanasada, and should not be confused with the sword of the same name. Kanasada was ordered by Hosokawa Tadaoki to make this sword. Tadaoki was married to Akichi Mitsuhide's daughter and was in the service of Oda Nobunaga. When the coup was staged and Nobunaga was killed, Hosokawa refused to aid Mitsuhide and his father-in-law was later defeated. He was also a genius on the battlefield and had fantastic swordsmanship skills. 
He was also often described as a man of culture who was exceptional at tea ceremonies and a well-mannered man, though his character was also seen as quite horrible. One such instance of this horrible character was when he decided to show his son what it was like to be a true ruler. With this, he gathered 36 of his retainers and executed them all in front of his son using an Uchi Katana. This event reminded him of the 36 immortal poets, otherwise known as the Sanju Rokasen. So when naming his sword, he took the last characters from the name, and the last name of the smith, leaving him with the sword name, Kasen Kanasada. His owner's personality is quite clearly present in the character in Token Rambu. Kasen is obsessed with elegance, stating that he enjoys partaking in tea ceremonies, poetry, and very specific types of philosophy. However, once on the battlefield, he'll say things like, bringing out the other side of his master's ruthless personality. In terms of how the character is presented visually, it's possible that the beautiful design and elegant clothing comes from the sheath of the real sword. The sword is rather well known for how beautiful its sheath is, the design of which was influenced by Tadaoki's love for tea culture and his art sense. When Kasen becomes wounded in battle, he clearly has a wound on the right side of his cheek, which is another callback to his master. Tadaoki was struck by a catapult on the cheek, leaving him with a scar in the same place, and Oda Nobunaga often complimented him for it. Currently, the sword Kasen Kanasada is being kept at the Issei Bunko Museum in Tokyo, but has never been put out for public display. And that concludes the history of the five starter Uchigatanas. If we missed anything out or made any mistakes, apologies for that, as some of the swords have very loose and hard to confirm history behind them. In the future, we're hoping to cover all of the swords that are in the game, so we hope that you enjoyed the first part, and we hope you have a better idea of what sword you want to start your game with. So thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys soon! Bye! Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>